Welcome to the first episode of King's Bounty 2 Development Diaries. King's Bounty is a fantasy RPG series dating back to 1990. And today we'll talk about the core elements of the new game. There are three aspects that form King's Bounty trademark gameplay. The first one is exploration, interacting with characters and doing quests. The second is hero management, which means choosing proper equipment, talents and army composition. The third, final part, is tactical combat. Gameplay-wise, tactical battles form King's Bounty's core, but actually you won't spend most of your time fighting. Take Fantasy Wars, for example. It's a game that has little else but battles. When you're not in combat, you're basically doing nothing. We expect that in King's Bounty 2, players will spend about one third of their time fighting. The rest of the time, they'll be exploring, talking to characters, reading, solving puzzles, and looking for better equipment for their hero. All of these elements will be familiar to long-time fans of the series, but each one received considerable improvements. For example, in previous King's Bounty games, most players used top-down camera, while the new game prioritizes third-person camera, letting players experience the same things as their character. Exploration plays a very prominent role in the game, and now it's much smoother, deeper and believable than before. You become your character. You walk where you want, you see things, you hear things. Maybe you'll overhear some townsfolk talking about something interesting. Maybe you'll find an environmental puzzle that will require you to turn some levers in correct order or navigate through a swamp without drowning. Stuff like that. Players will be able to choose their hero from multiple candidates. They vary not only in backstory, talents and magical aptitude, but also in their ethics and their preferred method for solving problems. We have four basic ideals any living being can be aligned with. Finesse, strength, anarchy and order. Basically, if you meet a group of bandits, you can be pretty sure that they're heavily inclined towards strength and anarchy. If your character has similar disposition, it's quite possible that you'll find common ground and will be able to talk things out. If your hero respects order and tries to make small talk with an anarchist, most likely you won't even get a response. The ideals are not mutually exclusive. You may support order in general, but still let loose every once in a while. Also, ideals are not set in stone. You can change over time, mostly depending on which quests your character completes and what choices he makes along the way. Some tasks have very obvious solutions. For example, one of the first tasks in the game involves a scroll with certain important information. You can give it either to the captain of the guard or to the headmaster of the Assassin's Guild. It's plainly stated in the quest description, give it to this guy or that guy. But there will be some quests with really obscure solutions. Most of them will be side quests. However, because blocking story progress with an obscure solution, well, it's something we think is too cruel. Fans of King's Bounty series will feel right at home with New Game's combat mechanics because they stay true to basics. Battles are turn-based, Turn order is determined by unit initiative, and battlefield grid is hex-based. The main difference is that our battlefields are three-dimensional now. Put your bowmen on the high ground, block the only climbable slope with a tanky unit, and your archers will dominate the battlefield. Unless, of course, your enemy has a flying unit that can ignore the tank and deal with archers directly. Previously, there was a small list of maps for each environment type, and one was chosen at random depending on where the hero was when combat began. Like Swamp, 
forest or a beach. Now, the surroundings themselves are transformed into the battle map. So, if you encounter an enemy in a dungeon or on a mountain, that's where you're going to have to fight them. Army composition has had a serious overhaul. Previously, players could have hundreds of soldiers within a single unit if their leadership was high enough. Now, each unit has maximum size. For example, there can be no more than 12 spearmen in a unit, no matter how great of a leader your character is. The reasoning behind this limit is that we want players to keep changing their army composition. In previous games, they would find a few units they were comfortable with and take them through the entire game. Their army would keep growing larger, but it would consist of same basic units. But now, each unit, sooner or later, will grow obsolete, so players will have to experiment with new units and adopt their play style. This was the first part of King's Bounty 2 Developer Diaries. In our following episodes, we'll give more behind-the-scene information on story, combat systems and other cornerstone aspects of the game as well as answer your questions. So, make sure to leave a comment and subscribe so you won't miss out on the next episode.